Hey, Fizz here. Today we are looking at Critter Cove, a game that has been eagerly awaited by many lovers of cozy games. Why, you may wonder? Well, Critter Cove has been compared to popular games such as Animal Crossing and My Time at Sandrock. Is this an accurate comparison? Well, let's dive into Critter Cove to see. Critter Cove, developed by Gentleman Rat Studios, is coming out on the 10th of September into Early Access. Thank you to the developers for an early review key. But as usual, all my thoughts are my own and not influenced by the developer. Firstly, I want to give you a brief overview of the game. Critter Cove is an indie, cozy, open world life sim town building game set in a post-apocalyptic paradise. You are there to restore the old town to its former glory as a tourist town by farming, cooking, exploring, fishing and crafting everything that you need. I played the demo of Critter Cove some months ago and thoroughly enjoyed the game. To my surprise, I'll explain more as I go along, but I am excited to have the chance to review this game for you. As it is in early access, we just need to be aware that the game isn't complete. Bugs may be present and the content may or may not change in the future. Okay, let's take a look at the gameplay. The first thing I noted about the game were its accessibility settings. They specifically had settings for players to suffer from motion sickness. And as I suffered badly from this, these were very welcomed. There was a motion sickness helper and a motion sickness focus, which added a small reticule to the center of the screen to help provide a visual stable point, as well as being able to change the field of view and input smoothing. I also liked the lightning flash, which indicated which aspects on the settings could be reduced to improving performance. Very useful for people like me who find settings confusing at times. Critter Cove is controller compatible, but I much prefer using a keyboard and mouse. The controls are very intuitive and easy to grasp, using WASD to move, E to interact, Shift to sprint, and Shift and middle key to rotate items on placing. There is also a setting to snap to grid when placing or moving items, which makes decorating a breeze. The game is single player, and as far as I'm aware, there are no considerations for cooperative at this time. The character creation in Critter Cove is detailed and innovative. I love the different style of heads, bodies and accessories you could use from the human to the cat, who of course I played, the bear, the wolf, and even a frog and other fun characters. The character's features, patterns and colors could all be changed. But I really like the idea where you could save the colors you have used to make it easier to go back to them if you make a mistake. I thought this was quite unique. Character customization really brought your character to life. As it's a third person game, the spending plenty of time looking at your character, I spent quite some time in this area of the game, creating it to my liking. Though saying that, there is an option to edit your character in the game later on when you find a certain item. At present, I only played around five hours of the game, not including the demo. But I have come across many missions, colorful characters, treasure troves, shipwrecks, and varying recipes to find, learn, and craft. As far as I can tell, there are no enemies, which adds to the relaxing feel of the game. I love that you are able to swim and explore shipwrecks and secret coves, but the piece de resistance is the sailing in your own boat. It is so peaceful sailing the mysterious archipelago, finding islands and shipwrecks, and the characters who need help. I love how you can see a speedometer, and it's great to know that there will be getting ship upgrades and different ship types in the future. When diving, be aware though that you only have a certain amount of time before you start to drown and lose your health. It does appear to go down quite quickly initially, so I do hope there will be ways to make diving a little less stressful. Of course, you couldn't have a base building game without, well, base building. And yes, this game has it all. You can customize your own house, but also the town and even the landscape, making Critter Cove uniquely yours. Let your creative side flourish, gamers. You have your own bed where you can nap or sleep to reboost your stamina or pass the time. And this is also your saving point, though you could also save an exit as well. And pretty much like real life, you never seem happy to get up. Talking about stamina, you do lose stamina over time with crafting and foraging. For example, there will be times you may need to nap or you can also experiment with food and cook tasty recipes to boost your stamina. Other things I'd like to mention are the different clothing that you gain from missions and treasures that you can wear and the different weather systems like rain and thunderstorms which add to the ambience as well as, well, I'll let you play to find out. I had so much fun sailing the seas, meeting the characters, treasure hunting and generally exploring and crafting. Critter Cove made me smile and generally made me feel part of the island and I wanted to help the characters with Critter Cove from a quiet lonely island to a bustling haven for tourists. Next up, let's take a look at the visuals and art style. The art style is vibrant with cute character designs and aesthetics that are adorable and appealing. 
I love the characters' animations, how they express their feelings with raised eyebrows, big grins, clapping and jumping around. It really gave them a sense of personality. And the lightning drew the thunderstorms and the rain droplets onto the scene, gave a real sense of atmosphere and a sense of doom at times, which gave that feel of a post apocalyptic world. The game performed well, but I did have occasional stutters and small visual glitches. For example, as Fizz walked into corners, you tended to lose her character and just saw floating tools that were in her hands. But there was nothing game breaking. Next up, sound design and music. The sound design is lovely with ambient noises that made the world feel alive and the bubbly soundtrack that changed when approaching different areas. The voice acting is more of a babble, very much the same track as Animal Crossing. But the dialogue itself was quirky to read, and the animations were fun, giving the characters their own sense of personality and mannerisms. Let's take a look at the story and characters. The story of Critter Cove is light-hearted and engaging. You arrive in Critter Cove after noticing an interesting advertisement asking for an island manager. Island manager, are you tired of the same old humdrum? Do you want to just get away? Opportunity awaits on the beautiful paradise of Critter Cove. Sorry, opportunity awaits on the beautiful paradise of Critter Cove. Critter Cove is looking for the right person to help turn it from wow to kapow. Join us as we turn our town into the top destination around. Are you a self-starter? Handy with tools? Willing to travel? Able to supply your own health insurance? Shark positive? A team player? Immune to robophobia? And willing to work on commission? <clears throat> if you answered yes to these questions, Critter Cove is the right place for you. Travel to the island included. Upon arrival, contact Renard for more details. Adventure in a post-apocalyptic paradise awaits. The shark positive and immune to robophobia piqued your interest a little. On arrival, you are greeted by Renard, a very charismatic rat who is very eager for you to get started. As you settle in, you become friends with the inhabitants, working together to rebuild the island so it can thrive again. The premise of the story is to rejuvenate Critter Cove. This involves building machines and crafting resources, gathering materials, meeting new inhabitants, whilst attracting new residents to live in the town. While rebuilding the town, you will explore the island and surrounding seas, swimming in the ocean, looking for shipwrecks and treasure, finding interesting relics and artifacts that may hold clues to the history of Critter Cove. The characters you meet on the way drive the story. They are quirky and fun, each having their own personalities that shine through their mannerisms, clapping or jumping up and down. I even like how their facial characteristics alter the movement of their eyes and eyebrows. I began to feel a close attachment to these adorable residents. I wanted to learn more about them. Let's now take a look at any strengths or weaknesses the game may have. As I stated previously, this game is in early access, so things can be changed and the development team are always listening to their players in their Discord channel. But even in early access, I found many positives to the game, especially the quality of life aspects and accessibility features. The maps and objectives are clearly marked with large icons. So for someone like myself, whose eyesight isn't the best, this made finding your way much easier. As well as the main map, which had a thorough legend showing all the icons, you also had a small compass, which clearly pointed you in the right direction. And I love that when you went sailing, if you passed over a shipwreck, it placed a symbol on the map. My favorite quality of life feature though were the containers. I loved how the containers linked together by placing one chest in the workshop whilst another at my home made items so much more accessible and also the fact that you could label the chest as well was a lovely quality of life feature in an early access game. I love the sailing around the island, but the only drawback I found was that you couldn't open your journal when sailing, which I occasionally wanted to do to see what my quest was at the time, as I have an awful memory. Overall, Critter Cove is a captivating, humorous journey that offers fun conversations with colourful characters through high-pitched babble, well-written fun dialogue, making you feel part of the island, increasing that eagerness to continue your adventure, helping the inhabitants and ex explore the areas to see what exciting offerings are to be discovered. I am giving this game a 9 out of 10. 
edging towards a 10 out of 10 as I have thoroughly enjoyed my experience and look forward to the future of this game. But there's still some visual glitches and bugs to work out, but nothing game breaking. If you remember at the start of the video, I stated that this game has been compared to Animal Crossing and my time in Sandrock. And I can see why. The whimsical characters with their gibberish speech and entertaining personalities and the customizations of your own home and doing up the island whilst exploring in a cozy, relaxing environment is very reminiscent of Animal Crossing and my time at Sandrock and will definitely appeal to gamers who love these games. Though Critter Cove has its own appeal and will definitely appeal to fans of all cozy adventure simulation games. If you're looking for games that bring a smile to your face, make you chuckle, you can get lost in the base building, crafting, exploring, then Critter Cove is for you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more game reviews. Let me know in comments what you think about the game or if there's something you would like me to review next. Oh, and did you hear that Cat Cafe Manager 2 has come to Kickstarter? Take a look at my latest review on Cat Cafe Manager to catch up with the game before the sequel comes out. Thank you for watching and take care.